But well before Bitcoin broke, you would end up, I mean, you could just go to any banking site, right? You could basically break any encrypted message that's ever been sent. How do you defend against this ahead of time? Well, isn't there, and this might be a little bit of a side point here, yeah. but it is fascinating to me because we're coming into this brave new world as, as we see it with technology, but isn't there some serious implications of if certain countries, whether it be us or someone else, got a quantum cu computer before anyone else, it could it, they could effectively take over the world silently without anyone knowing it and you wouldn't, they could set it, set a standard such that other places couldn't get to the power of quantum computing that they have? Well, I think the worry is not so much that. The okay. worry is more that it's not that there aren't quantum computers. The problem is that the number of qubits in those quantum computers is so small that it's hard to do anything useful with them. Um, so okay. it, like if you think of like uh, uh, the Apple II computer, and right? it was an 8-bit computer uh, so the microprocessor only, you know, dealt with eight bits at a time. Mm -hmm. And so today's qubits, the, the reason this Google uh, announcement, Willow, was I think it was, uh, had a hundred uh, error-corrected qubits, which is the most that anyone has ever been able to achieve, right? We should probably look that up. I don't remember the exact number, but okay. it was in, in that range. Um, Willow, hundred qubits or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just look at the Willow announcement, and the, the basic idea is that they were able to run one particular problem like significantly faster yes like uh exponentially faster uh and then the problem is people think you can break encryption with a quantum computer once you have enough qubits mm -hmm. basically every secret that's out there has been transmitted more or less digitally yeah banking bitcoin encryption, that's what i'm saying the blockchain is fucked blockchain. with it well it is eventually but the way the blockchain protocol works yeah so let's see how many qubits was it um Oh, we have it up on the screen. Yeah. Uh, 10 to 25, the fastest number of supercomputers, 10 mm -hmm. septillion years. Well, that's how long it would take to solve this particular... Now, this problem is not a useful problem. This is just like some problem they made up that they can show that a quantum computer runs uh, so much faster than a regular computer. So it would literally have taken like 10 septillion years for a supercomputer to solve that problem that they yeah, solved. Yeah, I just keep seeing that number in here. I don't I don't see the qubits, but the you point... You might see it somewhere else, yeah. The point's taken. Yeah. Wait, what's that chart? What's years? That chart? It's no, years. That's years more well. years. But so the problem has been like to, to get 100 error-corrected qubits, you need something like 1,000 actual qubits or something. One under five qubits. 105, okay. There it is, okay. So, so that's the actual number that they right. were able to... So that, it was significant because before you had like four qubits, right. eight qubits... Now, if it gets to 512, 1028, which is not that far away, you could theoretically start to break some of the encryption that's out there. But well before Bitcoin broke, you would end up, I mean, you could just go to any banking site, right? You could basically break any encrypted message that's ever been sent. How do you defend against this ahead of time? Well, what happens is you change the, alg the encryption algorithm. And there are certain algorithms that are more quantum safe than others. Uh, and so... Uh, you know, what I wrote an article back in 2017 that got uh, it kind of went viral at the time. This was during the last Bitcoin boom, and, and I titled it "How I Cornered the Market for Bitcoin Mining Using Quantum Computer." And it was just a theoretical article; uh, it wasn't an actual. You blue balls, to everyone. <laughs> okay. But I discussed how the Bitcoin mining algorithm works. What happens is you get like the transactions, and you put them in a block, and you create a block header. And then you have to come up with this random four bytes. And that is the hard part of the problem. So the reason, the way Bitcoin and mining works. And you didn't works, figure that out. No, I didn't, I didn't figure it out fully. You can tell me. You can but, tell me. No one's listening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no one's listening. <laughs> I, I, I laid out a framework for how you might think about solving that kind of a problem where you have some regular bits and some qubits. Now, there are certain algorithms that they think are more quantum safe than others. And uh, one of the algorithms used in Bitcoin mining, some of them say, well, you need a million qubits to do it, but that turns out that's not true because uh, you need a million if they were unerror corrected, but if they're corrected, you need a much smaller number than that. And uh, when I say algorithm, there are these guys who have figured out these algorithms uh, for how to use a quantum computer to do X, Y, or Z. And um, so eventually what can happen though with the Bitcoin protocol is they can change that encryption algorithm to make it harder. Like they've already done this several times. If you go back to the 90s, yeah. 
all the encryption was using like a particular algorithm. I forget what it was. This is way pre Bitcoin, obviously. Yeah, but, this is pre Bitcoin. Yeah. But then later they started using one with more bits. Uh, you know, there's like SHA two fifty six, SHA five twelve. It could it could keep trying to get ahead of the curve. Yeah, and there are there are algorithms that are quantum safe. So, but the problem is then you would need to. Uh, you know, I'm actually a big fan of Bitcoin, so I'm not at all predicting that I own Bitcoin too. <laughs> that this would be a problem. I, uh, you know, I was actually involved in in helping create some 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 tokens out there. You know, including one called Theta, uh, which is I think in the top fifty or so uh, uh, back in 2017, 2018. Wow. Uh, when we're doing it, it's sort of a distributed network that. Uh, lets you process AI and videos and other things out Did there. you do the Hawk to a coin too? Or uh, no, no. That I, wasn't I, you? That wasn't me and, uh, <laughs> and I didn't invest in it. Okay, uh, good. Uh, you know, people were like, perhaps you shouldn't take your financial advice yeah. from, from a girl called Hawk to Look, I'm, That's probably I'm, not the best, you know. I'm not exonerating her, but I mean, if you invested in that, yeah, Darwinism. Yeah, I mean, what you need to do is figure out is there a utility, you know, for specific coins versus other coins, and if it's just a meme, I mean, that's basically a meme. It's coin. a meme coin, and meme coins go up and they come. Right, right that's right, up. and and the, that's the difference I think between Bitcoin and also some altcoins that have some some actual utility, like Ethereum, mm. uh, and other, I mentioned Theta. There's a bunch of a Solana. There's a bunch that do have some serious utility. And you were helping build Theta, you were saying? Yeah, back back when it first got started, uh, it was a, originally a distributed video streaming network. Uh, and then later it became just a distributed processing network. So you can run AI and other things on. Mm. Uh, there were all these gamers, basically, who who were donating their GPU time. So what do you need to run games? You need good GPUs. Yeah. What do you need to run AI? GPUs, right? Yeah. Uh, it's the same uh, processor that's used like in each of those things. Yeah. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.